Okay, there's uh, one more person joining. And we're just waiting a few more moments until everybody else can join. Hello, Captain Sweep. Hello, Elijah. Hi, Captain Sweep. Hello. <laughs> we meet again. Yes. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hi, <laughs> Yeah, so this is the space of from the ground down and up, and we're just waiting a, a few more moments to wait. There was uh, two more people that said they were joining, and I'm just waiting for them. To see, two more minutes, a few more minutes, and I think we can get started. It's very nice to be here with you guys. And. Yeah, this, this space is a space for, for this exact thing of village weaving, where we're coming in connection with each other and <clears throat> coming into uh, connecting and relating and seeing uh, what, what is what is everybody need? What is your connection with village? What is your relating with village? And I think from all the people that are here right now, uh, most of us, Actually, except for Elijah, you, we all live in the island, uh, in Vancouver Island. Well, thank you. I see Wolf is still joining. Just give it a moment to for him to finish joining. I, I just want to say too, this is this is my one of the first work, work talks, and the place where I'm in right now is in closing in the, these gaps that I have uh, between my circle, my inner circle, and my outer circle, and between my my circle and community. Like I noticed that there, for me, there is some gaps there in terms of uh, the way I was offering. Um, these spaces and it just uh, it came into the the, the, the the fear there was a big fear for me about how that I was not connecting with my circle that I was avoiding something about the people that I was working most closely with mm. and that in a way like I was skipping that step I was like going out to to the community instead of uh Mm. Being, being right in contact with, with the people that I'm working with. And this was scary for me, uh, realizing that, that I, I was avoiding intimacy. I was avoiding connection. I was avoiding, yeah, like being on, on the spot or being seen, working more deeply into like the, the layers, the layers of, of myself or like being seen. Um, and for me, it's like this, a big appreciation for being here and uh, the people that are here are here that, that you're showing up for this and I appreciate you. The from the from the ground up is this space that is right now is this work talk but it's intended to be more like a field, uh, a, a ground, a, a space where more villaging can happen where uh, connections happen, networking, uh, creation of teams, like teams that come from here, from like hearing other people's stories and say like, hey, I'm on that, I'm on that pathway too, and I want to make a, a team about it. Uh, for me, uh, yeah, like, like creation of teams is so essential, uh, and it's been uh, my, my, the, the research field for for, for fulfillment of my own life, uh, like for like creating like this thing that I cannot create just by myself. Like I, I could be here locked in my room and do writing and writing and making videos. And, and ultimately like this is uh, like, I have this want, I, I want to, to connect with others and, uh, and I, I want to be experience intimacy with others. And I want to be in a team with others. And, and I, I, this is, uh, I'm talking about the, 
my strategy of being a, a lone wolf, about uh, like doing it all by myself, that I'm going to do it all by myself and that, that I have to do it by myself because nobody else is here or nobody else wants to do it with me or nobody is going to get it and nobody gets me. And there is this big wound about being the lone wolf, the lone family. And, uh, and yeah, like, like this, for me, this strategy is not working anymore. Like it's perpetuating this uh, isolation of myself and keeping myself uh, hidden and hiding be behind the, behind a wall or behind the keyboard or behind the screen. And, and it's not, it's not, like it's a, it's a step and it's like amazing and it's creating these like different possibilities and still like a lot of myself is in that is in that part and it's part of it's like the the pain of being in that that is uh, creating these spaces that is like like say like I don't know how it goes I don't know how it goes to be in a team uh, because all of my life I've been uh, like living as a lone wolf or for a lot of my life I've been living as a lone wolf doing it by myself and thinking that I can do it by myself so this is this is that space so like we come together and I say like we put our stuff in the table where are you at where is your relation with village what do you want from village how, how has it been for you why why are you here so welcome, welcome to from the ground down and up. And just this one more thing I want to say is that down and up, like there is a there is this sense of going down first. Like this is the grounding. And I was living in this fantasy world before that I would I would always be like it would always be up. That I, I'm just gonna go up. And and it was like this fantasy that the village is this happy place where we're all going to be happy and all my dreams are going to be fulfilled and I, I can finally get to rest. Yeah, like I have my village and I, I get to rest and I don't have to do anything else. And the big like like wall that I hit with that is that in connecting with the feminine and in connecting with my own parts of my own feminine, my feminine energy is like there, there is another side another side to it that I wasn't acknowledging that I wasn't working with and it's this like grounding like grounding like really like like being held and being held by by the air by the ground and like sinking in uh, into this place and 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 this experience like creating like the that sense of that I that I have something that I have something that is not all nice. It's not all like gonna be nice. It's not all gonna be just uh, like, ah, like I'm happy and it's like, we're all in agreement and we're finally here. Somebody else is joining. And, and it's coming to this place of like, going into the, 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 what is dark, what is not usually, what is not familiar to me. And this is like coming into, like face my, my anger and face my, my sadness and my fears and these things that I, I was rejecting uh, about myself or these things that I wasn't acknowledging about myself. Welcome, Soma. Thank you. Yeah. So um, uh, with, this, with this introduction, I want to pass it, pass it on and have like a little, uh, yeah, like I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear why you're here. I want to hear if you can say your name, where you're calling from. And this could be physically a physical space, or it can be from within you, or this can be uh, whatever that sounds for you. Where are you calling from? And why are you here? If you can speak a little bit about why you're here, what brings you here? And, and Melissa, will you start? Yes, I will start. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Melissa. I know most of you here. Um, I live right now. I'm in Souk on Vancouver Island. 
and my bus that's a house my three kids mm, my partner is Jorge and I'm here because mm, there's like two parts that are really alive about it one is this creative part that right now this call for me is an action in villaging like this is what village is right now today this is this is how it goes this is what it is mm, so I, I'm here for it and yeah I'm here to be villaging with you right now to be relating with you one moment and I'll take the blanket down the bed yeah the other part that's alive that brought me to this call is about uh, being a mother and having this extra load of responsibility and really feeling the pain of not having a village here right now. I have a lot of fucking rage and a lot of grief about this kind of lone wolf strategy that is so alive in my own conditioning and also the pressures all around me where I live and and I have a family three kids myself and a partner that when it's just us we are not resourced enough to raise three children it's like this insanity so I'm I'm here because I have a lot of pain about this question of like where the fuck is the village where is everybody why am I here by myself with these children? And I can see the trauma of like, for example, this lone wolf strategy or this isolation or only think about me. I can see how it gets passed on to the kids and how it will perpetuate to the next generation. And that's very, very painful because I can see it. So I'm here because... Because one, it hurts, and two, I'm I am in creation of what is the village and how does it go. Yeah, that's me. Thank you, Melissa. Can I pass it on to someone else? Yes. I, I will pass it to Amuna. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Amuna. Mm, I'm on Vancouver Island right now. And that's where I'm calling from. I really resonate with a lot of the things Melissa said about like the pain of being like alone. And yeah, only having these like surface thing about Oh, how's your day good with like, let's say my siblings or my parents or people who I feel like yeah, we should be taking better care of each other. And I feel very angry about the fact that I feel like the only ways I know how to be is either my family space, which works really well, me and my partner and my son doing amazing things and being in nature and living together and it does work, but I don't have any way to have community that's for all of us, like for me to have to have other mothers to be with and to have other women to be with and to share with and yeah I think that's something that's very difficult in the structure of like me not having women to share my life with and my husband doesn't have men to share his life with and it creates like some tension um and there's this trying to create community for my son but it's a lot of things that are outside of the family structure so it's either he goes off to do whatever he needs to do and have friends and have experiences but I don't find any place for us to do it together um, and even in like kind of new age or community building spaces, I feel like it's a lot of geared towards like adults. And then that pushes me outside of those spaces because I have a child and I don't, he needs to be with me. Um, yeah, a reason why I'm here is because I have a lot of like fears about villaging and about creating community. And I feel like there's a lot of these like blockages that I feel and the two of them that are like the most alive right now. One is about money, about like there's no possible way to do, to have community or to create community here because it's so expensive or yeah, all these reasons like why I tell myself it's not possible to do it. And also this thing about like fear of conflict of like what happens when 
things get bad or what happens when things get yeah like what Jorge said about it not all being this agreement of oh it's beautiful we all get along we're living together we're doing things together and it's so good but like this fear of am I going to lose the people who I care about and who I love if we try to go into this kind of more intense container together if yeah that scares me like I kind of want to just pre preserve myself and like my connections and I'm afraid to like go even more real with it because I don't want to fuck it up basically uh yeah I think that's what I have to say for now and thank you Jorge for holding this space I yeah I just learned about it last night and I was like yes I want to be there I appreciate it yeah thank you Emuna for saying all of that would you like uh, will you pass it to the next person Uh, you're still on mute. Yeah, I will pass to uh, Captain Sweet. <clears throat> Hello. Um, I, I, I feel as if there's a sort of a, maybe, what you, maybe a Zeitgeist or a sort of a call right now because we've gone through so much alone and we got to the worst of it, you know? And it's it's really affected everyone, I think. And I it, what I found is I I didn't like I, I used to just go to the coffee shop. That was my only way of being around people. And that was my village. And that's as good as it got. And I have had some experiences where I have lived on sort of like a, a beautiful piece of land with other people where you know we we it was close. You know, it was about 10 people, but everyone was there in friendship and everyone was there um, sort of for a higher purpose. And the little I experienced of that, at some point, it was great. It was, it was like, this is the life, in a sense. And it inevitably sort of went downhill through the uh, conflict that happens. And that seems to be what usually happens, right? Like, whatever is good, something goes wrong. And it's usually something, I mean, it just seems to come out of nowhere sometimes. And, and then we don't really know how to deal with it because we're, we just, I don't know about you, but I, I shut down, I disassociate, I disappear and other people have their own mechanisms and we, we don't deal with it. And so just the, the idea of sort of bringing up the negative sides of what we've gone through seems like a good start. And I, I think like one of the main reasons I'm here is I, I actually met Jorge and Melissa at the Eco Village, and I was participating in something there that did go wrong, and it was nice in some way, but it was, again, there was, there's very different interpretations of reality. There was very different interpretations of what was allowed, of how to be, and there's always the person in charge, and they can throw you out. They can throw you out if something goes wrong. And uh, they ended up throwing somebody out sort of on my team, and I ended up leaving because I just I was tired of it. I was just tired of being places because I I have been the person who's been kicked out quite a lot for being you know I mean lots of different reasons. But um, if you're on the fringe, if you're on the outside, if you're not the same as everybody, you tend to sort of you can be scapegoated or you can be the black sheep or whatever it is. And a lot of times you're the person who's pointing to the problem, or you're the person who's who's addressing the problem. And so I, I found with Jorge that over the time since I've known him, he has been the person to initiate my own work to the next level. He's been the person who's asked me to teach whatever I've been teaching. And we're recently, we're getting closer together on another project and you know, I feel we need to support one another in what we're doing. We need to know what each is doing and help out and show up when something's going on. And I've been very isolated, but my own work is, is team building systems and tools, communication systems and tools. And it's kind of funny because I, I feel like I have a lot of, of my shadow is linked to actual team building and, and connecting with people and that's why i built the tools because I, I i couldn't comprehend why this kept happening and so i i wanted to sort of do something about it and i have a another old friend here uh, soma so i'm glad you're here uh, but i i put out a 
I actually, for the first time in, in a long time, I, I invited 37 people specifically to come. I mean, it was probably just a week away. And then just yesterday, I sort of prompted a bunch and only one or two even acknowledged it. And it, I find there's this deep well of disappointment. There's this deep uh, pain around attempting to get people together to do something. And I, I have a larger vision of an actual kind of shared knowledge community idea that I, I never take steps towards because I'm so either irritated or resentful or the negativity that has built up over the years of trying to do something is so much that I, I just say, fuck it. I, I go back to my research. I go back to my little world and it isn't a nice world. You know, it's alone. And um, so I just felt that, you know, I, I something has to be done. And, and I think Lori again was initiating something and that's, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Soma, you want to go? <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Are <laughs> you, you studying it in? That was pretty big what you shared. So thank you. Uh, hi, all. Um, Soma, Gabriel is, I go by Gabriel. Um, yeah, I've known uh, Elijah for a better part of 20 years now, I guess. So um, on the one hand, I'm here in, in, in tandem and in connection to honor that uh, history. Um, coming into contact with Jorge and uh, having a couple um, quick jot-ins through Messenger. Um, I appreciate uh, the initiation for coming together to connect in community and to, to um, dig into the process of co-discovery, I guess. Um, I'm presently living in a house uh, in Victoria that is a social experiment um, um, by the initiation of a of the woman who owns this home. And she's been running this home as a as a kind of village space that um, that values um, having people of different ages and different backgrounds, um, elders and youth together. Um, yeah, it's just coming into, to, into it myself since October. It's, it's kind of new for me and in, 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 in that I'm in this actual space and it's just like walking into this house and it's like every little nook and cranny has some intention built into it in terms of the woman who's, who owns this place as a mosaic worker, it's like you look in little corners and little nooks and crannies, and there's just love and intention built into the space. So as somebody that's coming into the space, it's like how just recognizing in myself, how do I see what is in the space, what's already here um, without my own intentions or projections? in the sense that I've been invited into a space where there's already a sort of living confluence of, of expression or operation. And so on the one hand, that's coming into any kind of community. What is the life of that community? What's its orientation? What's its emotional field? What's its ideology? And how do I come into contact with that and, and, come to comprehend it in a living way. So that's of interest to me. Um, in this space, there's social agreements, there's various documents, and um, even in the application process of getting involved in the community, there's like a six stage process that a person would go to, to uh, sort of enter the door as it were. 
So just looking at protocols of how to engage community is something that I'm coming into contact with. Um, in the short time that I've been here, um, coming up against those edges of conflict or um, interpersonal um, antithesis, where we have different uh, senses of what's going on and how to proceed forward in, in while well, staying connected to the congruency of the situation and where I can feel incongruencies and in within myself in terms of what are my own motives and how deep is my own interest and in coming up against those edges. Um, listening to some of the introductions from you folks, I was touched by the sense of my own animalness in the sense that I'm a social animal, um, connecting to warmth, connecting to touch, whether that's a hug or having somebody say, I see you, having somebody say, I support you in terms of if you have children or if you have projects, you're, for myself, I'm a musician. It's like, it feels great even if I'm not a great musician, say as an example, that if I'm in a space and I pick up my guitar, that there's a genuine sense of concern or connection. I, I see you as somebody who has an expression and I'm willing to be present without judgment and support um, to explore in the space of vulnerability, what it means to be present with you within your own present process. Um, I was reminded of uh, two tribes of apes, the bonobos and the chimpanzees. And in the chimpanzees, there's a, a strong sense of hierarchy where the male um, alpha sort of controls the movement of, of social efficacy, I guess, in the tribe versus the bonobos it's more decentralized and it's um there's not strong uh, male female partnerships and ownerships of children everybody in the tribe is having intimacy with everybody in the tribe and there's a lot of fluency in terms of uh, shared meaning so even in the sense of human connection what does it mean to be in in partnerships within a sense of community where do we have our boundaries with each other how do we define boundaries um where is it open where is it closed where is that healthy where is it too constricting anyways i'll, I'll kind of leave it there so just that there's a, a few edges that i'm exploring and curious about from the philosophical inter or uh, uh spiritual going up into higher dimensional space what's the evolutionary arc that's trying to manifest itself in the nest of our shared experience to what are the dynamics of our shared experience just as monkeys hanging out together thank you gabriel yeah thank you yeah you open up a, a whole bunch of doorways and um yeah it'd be awesome to explore and navigate those Thank you for, for sharing all of that. Will you pass it to the next person? Um, in my screen, I don't see a next person. Well, I can, uh, I can go. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Cam and um, I, uh, I connected with this, this group uh, through Jorge, I just, Happened to meet Jorge and Melissa one day. I saw their bus and I was planning on building one as well. So that was interesting to me. And I went and spoke to them and the rest is history, basically. And they're really uh, they're great people to have uh, connected with uh, because um, I feel like there's some big things that can happen here uh, if we collaborate. Uh, where I'm, I'm, uh, I'm from Australia originally. 
I have uh, two kids. They're both Canadian. My wife is Australian as well. Um, we've lived here for six years. We call it home now. Um, we do really miss our family that's in Australia and that's uh, something that we have to consider in our lives as well as we move forward. Um, it's been many years since we've seen them. So due for a, due for a, a long visit soon, but also trying to work out what to do with our lives, trying to work out what the next chapter is. I mean, we built, uh, we lived in Victoria and we, uh, we bought the bus and just dove headfirst into converting it and then, uh, moved in in three months, which was crazy. And, and then, um, took it up to Parksville. That's how we ended up here. So we just, uh, we just found a pad that was in Parksville and, so that was that was it. It's it's quite a nice place. Um, we had lots of connections in Victoria, and, and we miss those. But uh, m- pretty quickly made new ones up here. Um, hmm. I want. To, uh, I'm sick of the way we live, and um, you know, in terms of consume consume and running on this wheel that feels so hard to get off and uh that's why i built the bus is to to just uh, escape what is um what feels to be like dragging us dragging us down and uh just want to i want good people to live with and uh, people who share similar values and um you know, uh, uh, touching on what Jorge said, this lone wolf uh, attitude, kind of this lone wolf uh, mindset that, uh, no, it's too difficult to try to uh, do this with other people and, like, we're just going to get some land and we're just going to build, like, our homestead uh, on, on some land. I don't know where it's going to be. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Uh, I have, like, a bit of carpentry skills and stuff, but... Um, really like at the end of the day to do something that big um it's a it's a huge undertaking to to try and do it on your own and and not only that um is that like a humans need we need other humans uh we need connection um so like the more i think about this the more i think about our future the more i think oh we're gonna we need to we need to do this together and like we're so as humans in in the last you know whatever hundred years uh, I don't know how long but we've lost so much connection and <clears throat> to ourselves um, and uh, and each and each other and um, with nature as well and I think that like the reason that I've that uh, I have been and we have been and I think a lot of people are so um sad or feel like they have uh uh that they're lost is like because we lost this deep connection that we had with the earth and uh nature and um with our with ourselves like i want to i have this deep desire to forage food and, and hunt and um uh grow our own food and and kind of not i just i don't want to rely on the system but um you know, I have that, I have that, um, th- this, uh, I- I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm nervous about conflict. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with conf, uh, I can deal with conflict, but it's the, I don't know. It's tough. And I know that like, from what I've heard from, from everyone speaking, like we all have, I think we all have a similar feeling. Like it is hard to, it's hard to connect. Sorry, sweetheart. I, I, I was want to ask something to the team right now. Everybody here, like Cam, you said he's nervous about conflict and he's scared about like all of all of this uh, connection. And I want to ask you here in the team, like, does anybody feel like like resonates with that that they're nervous with this uh, feel being in conflict or just uh, put your hand up if this has been a thing for you. You, you're in conflict and you're yeah 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 so thank you yeah thank so, you for sharing that 
<clears throat> we all have the similar thing. And I think that um, it, even with my mindset of just like kind of live and let live and uh, you should share love with everyone and really like love is all that matters. But there is also, uh, we you do have to have like a, a like a powwow uh, every now and again to figure shit out because I can I can very easily like to begin with just let let something go, um, but then it does begin to wear on you. Uh, kind of the more the more you you try to let it go, like even if you think that oh I know it's not affecting me, like it it does, and even things that feel petty and small and like they oh I don't even want to bring that up, like that's just so silly. I think that you still have to speak and and talk with each other and figure it out. And if that's how you're going to live uh, with everyone, that things like that need to be said and need to be done. So that that that's the biggest thing. I was speaking with Jorge uh, just the other day, and um, you know, we touched on this, and that um, that's my biggest. Uh, that's my biggest. I would say it's my biggest fear is. Uh, start this thing with a bunch of people and then we can't figure out how to get along so that's number one like we need to figure out um how to how to how to how to to, we need to figure out how to not only to agree we need to figure out how to disagree and um you know the the problem of fairness and oh that's not fair for me if that person gets to do that and, and whatnot so that's probably like the first barrier that we need to overcome otherwise this all is just going to fall apart yeah. Thank you, Khan. Thank you. I, I wonder if you could uh, if you could hold space for Tara to speak to of course, for her to dude. share. Yeah, Tara did. Uh, Tara actually last night did um, just a draft of like a uh, a little village map, and just to begin with the small steps like that to put it on paper. Yeah. Uh, to, you know, it might be the <laughs> There might be the first of 500 different drafts, but um, I think to just start. And um, uh, that's kind of what the same thing we did with our boss. I had no idea what I was doing with the boss. I had no idea if I was going to get it finished in three months. And um, you kind of just got to do it. But also with something that's this big, you do have to have um, a little bit of a, a plan in mind. Uh, you still You do have to think about the future a little, like, been that I, I have children there will be children in this space um yeah i don't know if tara what to, you don't want to you don't have to have me on video or anything no T- tara doesn't feel like sharing at the moment she's just with uh she's just feeding our baby some breakfast okay. um yeah okay so here from from tara tara's uh, camp's partner and we also been collaborating and yeah, I just lo- love her input in, in the space. It, it's amazing. And I think she's a village designer. She's uh, She has these natural skills of seeing the village and having a clarity about what the, the village uh, uh, could look like and what she wants and what, what can be great for the, the children. And so that's why I wanted to hear from her. And, and it's okay if it's not the right time. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing, Cam. That's okay. And yeah, we're going to be talking about some some of these things that you're bringing up. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot from so far about conflict. And I'm hearing from Wolf. I think this is Pete. Uh, are you able to hear us, Pete? What? My dolphin is going to work. Okay, he can hear us. We, can, you, can you speak? No. No, I hear you. Can you try? Can you try saying something? Yeah. Can you? Can anyone hear me? I yeah. can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So we just don't have video. Yeah, is the video is not working. Okay, that's fine. Voice, voice will work. It'll be great to see you, and if you can activate the video. Um, yeah, I, I try know. to share a screen, and it just says host disabled participant from screen sharing. It should be the your camera. Uh, yeah, it should be your camera. It, sh- it shouldn't like everybody should be able to share their video. 
Okay. Uh, well, we can just go ahead without the video. That's okay. Because yeah. yeah. I don't really want to hold up the group or, or the flow of what's happening. Go ahead. So yeah. your name, where you're calling from and why are you here? Yeah, my name is Peter. <clears throat> and the reason I'm here is, uh, well, I'm in Victoria currently. Um, and I have been on the West Coast for about six or seven years now. And I've had involvement in um, a few communities. Um, I'm here because, uh, well, Jorge and me have been working together a little bit more recently. And I know him from, from Souk and from a community there. And we had some uh, pretty heart opening experiences together. Um, I believe in the work that he is doing. Um, so I'm here to support that and to support him and to uh, kind of hopefully reinvigorate uh, my passion for community and for community building and village building, because I feel that, um, yeah, when, when uh, Captain, the captain there was speaking, Captain Sweep, uh, is it Elijah? Elijah is your name? Um, I felt I resonated with a lot of what he said, you know, uh, having this moment where you're living in this almost ideal like situation and then you know all of a sudden conflict leads to kind of a break in that relationship um so I, I feel like relationship has been at the heart of my um challenges with growing community um so and and that largely seems to relate to uh communication right so what we have is we have so many people that want to uh live in a different way they don't they're tired of this system and the way that it's working and they're they're really uh wanting to make a change they want to connect they want to you know have have these connections in their lives that that are fulfilling and where they feel like they have a place uh but but one of the greatest obstacles i've seen to that is 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 the um communication or even the facilitation within communities to make this space for the the, the needed communication um, to, to find, you know, clarity and resolution and find, um, uh, you know, you know, like some, sometimes communication has some final results, which is fine. You know, sometimes we have to know the boundaries of something and we have to know when it's time to move on from something, you know, so, so it's kind of like, hopefully I'm not babbling on here, but we all have this need to be a part of community and to, to be connected. So I, I feel like what I would like to do in the future is work on those communication aspects, work on facilitating circles where we can, we can communicate better. You know, we can find um, more, more, more intentional and positive ways to, to, to work towards you know the cohesion that we desire perhaps you know i i just feel like um hmm. <laughs> yeah just one moment i'm just i'm just feeling into this um Yeah, I, I mm, I'm trying to find the words right now. <laughs> yeah, I hear your yeah, cohesiveness. I'm struggling right? with the words right now because yeah, creating finding groups to that are cohesive and communication that brings uh, some sort of cohesiveness yeah. to the group. There, there yeah, has to you. be like a, a a vision and a common vision. Like I feel like what's lacking is clear vision, right? And and a clear leadership structure, you know. Um, if there's yeah. clear leaders in in the community that are are handling the community, which which means you know not just what needs to get done, but uh, the relationships that exist within the community, you know, and 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 being yeah. able to discern um, the needed <laughs> steps, 
which is for the greater good and to discern, you know, what everyone's involvement is, you know? So, so, I mean, at times when we don't fit into something, it's because um, there isn't, you know, you, you may have similar ideas, but there isn't the, those cohesive relationships or, you know, there, there, there is, there isn't clear communication about roles or, or, or different things like that. So, um, you know, and, and maybe that just encourages us to find um, or create uh, uh, the, the community that we desire. Right. So uh, for myself, um, I've, I've taken a step back, you know, I, I feel like engaging with this, this group um, is, 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 I'm just, I'm trying to look at it from a perspective of, okay, how do I re-engage or what ways do I want to re-engage and what, what do I want from community? What do I want from relationship, you know? Um, and, and how does that fill me up? Because sometimes we, we want to offer something, but if we, if there isn't the reception, you know, there's, we can't, we can't just bring that, you know? It has to fit within within the, uh, um, uh, I guess the the vision, right? You know, so so having a clear sense of vision, and and purpose, and um, if you're a leader, maybe maybe that's that's just the calling to 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 either find a vision that you're in alignment with, or to create your own vision that 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 uh, other people are 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 that relate to essentially you know thank you peter yeah peter i um i heard uh, wait up wait wait come let's just i want to wait a little bit because peter just shared a big thing and yeah and um, i'm just the uh, i want to take a pause uh yeah let's take a pause to to use like let it land um, there is this very big thing that he just mentioned about leadership and about a vision and about being in a in a something that works and then conflict comes and, and then it doesn't work and and it's just very big what you're talking about Peter is, and it, and then it goes into this like complicated like very complex thing about like how are we gonna do it who's gonna be the leader and like how are we gonna organize organize who's gonna take the responsibility so. It, it opens up these like big big doorways uh, that like we could uh, like it could be very easy to get lost into into the details about all of this into all of the the kind of the, the nitty gritty about like what what is the the village what makes the village and what brings us together how is it organized this is huge how how is the village organized is huge and communication is huge how how do you solve conflicts is huge. And, and I just wanted to, yeah, to have like that little acknowledgement of, of what uh, Pete, Peter was sharing and also what each one of you was sharing. And, and uh, is, this, is this still relevant, Cam, what you want to share? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, I've, I think, I, I'm not sure how this... All comes to fruition, but I do think there needs to be some sort of leadership, like, uh, like almost like a community board. That, okay, that okay, just let, let's pause there for a moment. Just, okay, because uh, yeah, we go into this this phrase. We need, we need is like that, and then like so much can go after that. We need da 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 da. We need da 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 da, and, and then I want to bring it to to like a, a more core level. Uh, uh, of what I, I, I want to bring you this this really simple example that is that I heard it a few days and it just like clicking uh, something about conflict resolution and I'm going to give you an example uh, of something that happens in the Mayan culture uh, and in the whenever there is a conflict uh, there would there was this example of in the Mayan culture there was a, this village and the uh, the neighbors, they were having conflict. There was a neighbor that they were speaking avocados uh, and the, uh, from somebody else's tree. 
And then there was, and this became in the, this came up in the community meeting when they all get it, gathered together in, in like this mass. It's like a mass, it's not even a circle, but it's like a mass. It's like people like standing around and there is somebody speaking and this problem comes to the surface. Oh, that, that person is grabbing avocados from my tree. And then the other person is like, yeah, but the tree is leaning over my, pro my, my, my property or like my home. So it's my avocado tree too. And then it's like, and then when that problem, the problem gets exposed, everybody starts talking at the same time. La, 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 la. Ah, says, he should be doing this. Like, no, that's a false shit. And then like laughing. Ah, ha, ha, ha. This is like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, <laughs> and then like, and then people like cry. Oh, and then it's like this like mass that happens like all chaotically and randomly. And, and then somehow at the end, they, they already know what to do. Like somehow from all of that, that happens, like all of that happens, the emotions get expressed. Like the people like get to express their feeling and what's happening. And then like this, and then they decide like, okay, this guy has to go and rake the, the avocado tree uh, once a week or something like that. And, and somehow it comes up with like this, like non-rational solution. It wasn't an effort. It wasn't like a, like this, like finding of like who's guilty and who's right and wrong. It was like about like, and and then everybody agrees like yeah that's that's the thing to do. And that guy had like that guy that was picking the, the the avocados has to go and and rake, rake the tree and like feed the tree and water the tree or or whatever. I don't know what the solution was, but it it tells me about this conglomerate that we have. That we have here, for example, is this group intelligence. Right now, we have something that is called group intelligence, and and in this thing about the leader, uh, it's very it's very tricky. It's very tricky. Like uh, I'm not the leader here. Like I I am the space holder, and and in a way, I'm going first, and that that is defined as being the leader. But I, I'm the space holder, meaning that uh, that that I'm holding the the space for learning to happen, for for us to win, for us to like gain something out of this, for us to ex experience something and and get something out of this. And so, what I what I was hearing mostly like from from your comments is this thing about the conflict yeah this, this this conflict that like i think from each one of you there was this this part of conflict in like how do i connect uh, in in the village like how do we solve conflicts what happens when there is something that i don't agree with yeah and and it's coming to me that it, this is like coming from the mainstream cultural context of relating from from our mind relating from our concepts and relating from our, our belief system and and the the the, the chief that i've have experienced in, in connecting with with my partner and connecting with, with other people and actually what's getting me to be here to be holding the space is the, this shift of, of coming from relating from my mind to relating uh, from my from my center from my being which is a completely different re relation. And because it, 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 it emerges from, from your feelings. It, it, like right now, like I, I, I dropped down and I felt my fear. I feel fear because uh, I, I got to notice the, how I relate with my partner from my mind and and, uh, and in doing that, like I'm just supporting this structure of the, the long wall, this strategy of the long wall, the, this continuous like, uh, m like mind over matter, or like this, um, this, the hierarchy. I, I think I'm talking about the hierarchy, the hierarchy the, of the, the cultural system where we live right now, where, where men are at the top and women are at the bottom, where we're in a patriarchal system that we've been in for for a, for a while, and this and this is very delicate to talk, and it's, it it needs to be talked about, 
It needs to be because it's the the cultural context where where I'm coming from and and where I'm guessing most of us are coming from. And and, and it's very important to 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 see this distinction of what is the cultural context, uh, so that so that because it's, it's a it's a it's a prison it's a prison that we're in where the man it's at the top and it's and the, the woman is at the bottom the, the man is the, the master and the woman is the slave and it's very uh, yeah like it's very delicate thing to to touch and and i'm i'm taking a stand for for this thing i'm taking a stand for a woman for man and woman collaboration for going back to like like listening to each other and and having this uh, communication in a way that everybody's heard. I don't know. I feel like, could any of the uh, of the women here speak towards what I'm talking about? When I heard you talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like this word hierarchy was interchangeable with leader or leadership. And in my experience with you, Jorge, and also with everybody that I've come into contact with the intention of like villaging or relating more than the usual superficial relating. Mm. Yeah, it's like what my experience with you, Jorge, is when you take responsibility for being authentic, it removes that layer of like unseen hierarchy, unseen leader, unseen like man is on top, woman is on the bottom, super subtle way of relating. And as as I'm listening and as I, yeah, these words conflict and leader are there, these are the things that in my experience in the village, yeah, this is where it fails. There's there's no clarity who's doing what. And there's no way to be with or resolve conflict. And what I used to do was blame it on the village because it wasn't there and it wasn't working. And the last 10 years of villaging has brought me more to myself that I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not, learning how to be with conflict or I wasn't I wasn't learning how to be out of hierarchy because for me it's very comfortable when the man is the the father of the family or the man of the house that's very comfortable for me especially because then I can blame him for everything that is going wrong so as I'm listening to you speak and to the last two men sharing I get this sense that my experience of villaging has gone from seeing the village that it it should have all these things and this is how it needs to go so I can be a part of it to my own lackings and what I'm not bringing in every single moment for that village to work and so often it's just an authentic yes or no and what it usually is is a yes and then a resentment that goes stuffed down inside and then a few months later the relating breaks, whether it's in my family space or in a community space with 20 people at the eco village, at the elemental collective, it's like this same kind of pattern. And so it's really about me, something like that. Like it's villaging is this inside thing, conflict resolution, leadership clarity. That's on me. That's on me to resolve conflict within myself and without myself. That's on me to have clarity of who's doing what, how, when, inside and outside as well. Yeah, that, that's it. That's what's brewing for me. Thank you. How, how about you, Emona? Do you want to, to speak to this? Yeah. For me, I, yeah, I have a really big, like, fear about it that in these kind of situations, the responsibility gets put, like, on the women to make it work, like, the legwork of, like, taking care of the children and doing all these things that, like, I feel like when you were talking about leadership, then it sounds like this, like, 
yeah, this thing about relating with like your thoughts or ideas or like how are we going to do it and like plans. But I feel like I have this fear of like, oh my gosh, am I going to be the one who's going to be like doing everything? And yeah, it's this thing about if I'm going to come into this situation passive, then for sure it's going to go to shit. If you like what Melissa said about an authentic yes or no, I feel like this very good idea of like living together in community and being with other people is like a very beautiful thing. But yeah, I'm afraid that just from the nature of like what you were saying, that society that we live in, that like I'm afraid for myself, can I, am I able to put myself first and not first this idea of community and of being together and yeah I'm scared about how to stay like real in that thing because I know myself and I know that I really want to make this and I know I really want to make it be that everybody could be happy and everybody could be fed and everybody can be clean and like together and I'm yeah I'm afraid about this idea of like community does that yeah like am I getting the short end of the stick like uh, something about resources and and like me not wanting to be the one who has to make a man go get those resources or being I don't want to be in that position like I don't want to be anybody's mother except for like my son like that's what I'm afraid of about having to be like the like behind the scenes mover of it like I want to hear men in a community say something about like being proactive that's what's important to me yeah and I'm mm -hmm. afraid of that because I think it's a very big thing to unpack because there's a lot of subconscious stuff about who does what and how do we relate with each other and we're not always aware of like what's going on yeah that's also a thing about like lack of clarity that yeah it makes me makes me afraid because I know that it's like the most comfortable thing for me to not talk about that to just like yeah to just talk about the part of it that's good and the part of it that I want and the part of me that doesn't want to live anymore in this society of like yeah that part of me is like very easy for me to, to tap into what's not working for me now but yeah I, I don't know how to preserve the other parts so uh, yeah I don't have some answer about it it's just like a fear mm -hmm. that comes up for me about what you were saying mm -hmm. yeah it makes sense thank you thank you everyone and thank you Melissa for speaking into this it, it's um in my own, uh, uh, let's see, there's a few ways where we can go from here. And the, the question for me is like, okay, if there is no leader, if there is no like person at the top that's making the decisions and that is taking a stand for the village and that is uh, making, like putting the resources, you know, it's, so, it's the most common thing that we have right now. It's like, we have a president, we have a, a council, I mean, like this like hierarchy positions. So if, if it's not that, like, what is it? If it's not like somebody at the top enforcing or creating uh, this uh, giving to, to the people of the village, like what is the, the other option? And this is this has been like my discovery process that uh, that I, I that I'm I'm in a process of growing up, like of realizing uh, like my my own immaturity, like my own childishness, in a way like how I create with uh, when I have an idea in my mind of who I am and what I'm creating and actual the actual results of what I'm creating. I have an idea in my mind of like who I am and how things should go and who, who my partner is and who this other person is. And, and, and then there is actually like the, the results that, that I am creating, the results that are, that are happening in my life. And this, the results speak for themselves the results that you, you can see them. It's like instant feedback from the universe. Uh, so the, so we talked about responsibility. You guys talked about responsibility. Who's taking the responsibility? And, and what happens most often in, in hierarchical structures when there is a, a person at the top is that responsibility, that person gets overburdened. That person that's at the top, he gets overburdened. And, and it gets into corrupting of power, corruption of power that, so there is a doctor, for example, and the doctor, he has more hierarchy than the nurse. So then all of a sudden, like the, there is a, like, there is this way to, that the nurse gives a responsibility to the doctor uh, uh, to like, 
to it's like the, the patients the patients give responsibility to the doctor uh, and they don't take responsibility for their own health and this is happening like we've been taught this we've been hammered this shit in since 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 school since we went to school there was a teacher at the front and the teacher was like telling us telling us telling us telling us like putting putting shit putting shit and and just like we were hammered by our teacher and then by our parents and then by by school and high school and like university and then we see it all over the government like if we are ourselves if i am myself i'm gonna be in trouble or if uh if i take responsibility then i'm gonna be in trouble uh so we we start associating responsibility with this like burden something because uh like for example if you didn't if you didn't you do your homework then uh you can say to the teacher i didn't do my homework and that will be the truth that will, that will be just simple i didn't do the homework and then there'll be a punishment like oh you didn't do the homework like that's bad you you're gonna fail at school you're gonna like fail in life and you're uh you're gonna fail the grade and you have to repeat it and and so we we started like internalizing these things like oh if if i tell the truth then i'm gonna be in trouble so we started like finding ways to say like my dog shoot the, the homework i i did the homework but my dog shoot it or it flushed down the toilet or something like this uh and it happens like that in so many different ways like like for example if you if you're playing ball inside of your house when you're a kid and then you broke a base your mom's favorite base you broke it and then you uh, and then you try to hide it try to like put it back together you you don't want your mom to find out uh that you actually broke the base and yeah like there is this like ways that that we that we started learning to give away our responsibility and so what happens is, is that the person at the top it starts getting all of these the person at the top has to take responsibility that is not being taken for the people at the bottom. So it, this comes into like leader burnout, like when there is somebody at, at the top and it works great, great at first, but then like everybody starts like delegating their responsibility uh, and not showing up. And then the person at the top has to start like doing more and they're getting more resources, but they, they just get like burnt out by having to sustain the weight of all the structure. So I, I mean, if it's not hierarchical, if there is not a leader that's making the decision for us, who's making the decisions? Can I speak to what, you, what you're saying? Because there's something very fresh in, in relation that I, that I think is important to say. Who, who, yeah, who, who is taking that? Who is taking that responsibility? Uh, it's I, I'll, I'll take that responsibility. Okay, go go ahead, Peter. Yeah, you, you want to share something? Yeah, yeah. In relation to what you're saying, so you're like, we'll say who's carrying this. You're talking about this hierarchical structure where there's a leader who is in control of what's below. But I think I think what that's bringing up is how important it is for us to become um, our own leaders, right? So that we're, we're, uh -huh. we're, we're, that we're, we're empowering ourselves to be fully who we are so that when we show up in a community, even if there's a hierarchical structure, you know, I know there's this, this, this attack against a hierarchical structure, but there are certain people that have stronger roles in communities you know, have been there longer, they, their position is very important. And that shouldn't just be completely overlooked. We have to recognize the importance of each individual's uh, uh, place in, in a community and, and, and so forth, right? Or otherwise, we are just going to turn it into chaos, which doesn't suit our needs. But well, if, wait, 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 yeah. so, like, you're saying that if, if it's not hierarchy, is going to be turning to chaos. Well, there's a natural hierarchy, right? And in, in a leadership not based on power over, but on a leadership standing up into that position, right? They hold the vision. They hold the, you know, they're aware of the whole of that group. Not everyone has that awareness within the group. 
Some people are only aware of themselves and what they want. But there's people holding the space that understand the vision of the greater structure and the greater plan or even or even what the land wants. You know, the people that understand what the land wants, the land wants this, yeah. you know, yeah. and somebody comes in, they're like, well, I'm a leader and I think we should do this. And, 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 and if there isn't an established hierarchy, then, then that, per, you know, then it's like, well, everyone can just have their opinion and then it's chaos and it doesn't really suit the, yeah. the, the needs of this, the, the land and the space and the people that are inhabiting it. And then yeah. it falls, it falls apart. Mm -hmm. Is essentially what happens because it's not built on anything solid. You kill it. Yeah. I, I so, so exactly. let, let's yeah. Say, I just want to finish something though. But go, but go however, ahead. if we learn how to empower ourselves, and we learn our own power, and we step up as leaders in our own being, then then we can step into the roles that are meant for us. Mm -hmm. You know, which doesn't always mean being at the top. It, it doesn't matter. I, I think Peter, we're you're, service. You're, we don't care about the structure. We just got to know that, like, we're serving a higher purpose together versus just interjecting our own idea on something without seeing the bigger picture. A true leader will see the whole. They will see the bigger picture of what's needed and so many of us can't get past ourselves and this is a culturally indoctrinated thing as well the individuality within society and me 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 for them to, to, to look beyond themselves and see that there there is a there's a bigger vision that that incorporates everything the land the people the resources everything so so pete yeah. pete yeah yeah i, I I think you're, you're what you're bringing up is like creating you're creating that distinction between uh, a, like a hierarchical leader that's like this top down and personal responsibility. Yes, you're speaking about personal responsibility. Yes, hundred percent. Yes, and and this is this is the to me the the shift. It is to me the the big shift, and and you're speaking also at the different the different levels. Uh, that that it takes for us to to go into our own personal responsibility, because yes. you you mentioned not not everybody can go into that space. Not everybody is aware of the, the village. Some people are only aware of themselves. Uh, and you're speaking you're speaking towards this thing, and yeah, that that makes sense. And and it comes to, into is is just so so big. It's so big. Uh, because I noticed that it's like a lot of emotions in this and it can be so easily like a, a trigger for for us to go into like discussion or like agreeing and disagreeing or like these spaces of where where we're like 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 mashing and uh, mashing our boxes together and and I have some things that, that I want us to do today to one moment Gabriel yeah, I have some things that, that we, I want us to do today uh, that kind of like get that experience of, of a different way of relating. Um, and yeah, I, I noticed, uh, Gabriel, you had something to say, and Cam, you also had something to say. Uh, yes. Go, uh, all right. Cam, can you go first? And then Gabriel. Yeah, everything that Peter said and then Elijah. Uh, uh, resonated with myself and Tara as well. And uh, Tara was uh, saying that um, everyone's always going to have their roles. Like no matter how we try to do it, there's always going to be like a spe specific roles. But I understand like I don't want this hierarchy where the person at the top is responsible for the person uh, whatever's below them and then below them like it, it's uh, right about personal responsibility and uh, being accountable um, and and um, and you know like you have to be community minded and um, not to have so much of a hierarchy but more like a committee where no one's above anyone but like we all are together it's it's tough. I don't, I don't know. I think you're uh, talking about, I think you're talking about circle technology or circular technology where we're meeting a circle. Yeah. Yeah. 
um that's kind that's kind of all i had to to yeah. add really to that. um so yeah, yeah everyone has their own strengths everyone always is gonna that's the thing about being human is we're all we're all so different and we all have uh different uh strengths that um we might bring to the table different things that uh we're good at and um yeah you know it was always uh, uh, Tara's just saying like if we kind of look back to um you know when w we all lived off the land and and stuff there was always uh well the the people who were very uh, vigilant um or uh, uh, you know were hunters usually the yeah, men yeah. go and hunt and the, the the women and the men it was almost like I would like it to be like this that the men um are taking care of the women and like uh uh, I don't know, just we're wired differently as males and females. And, and um, even in that, we, we have roles. So I'm kind of feel like I'm rambling a bit. So uh, cool, but I, but I, I, I hear yeah, I hear that everybody has a gift. Everybody has a, like a, a unique gift, a unique perspective. And I think this is such an anchor point for relating in village and for, uh, for kind of like humbling, like going into like seeing each other, seeing that I can see you, Cam, I can see you, Gabrielle, and I know you have a gift. I know you have like something so unique to you that only you can do. And and this to me is a big anchor point for relating in village and for for dropping out from from my thinking that I am right and that I I that I have the right way and to to like this place of like whoa like what is your gift like I have no idea what. I don't know what your gift is. I haven't met you with, uh, long enough to know what your gift is. And is like this inquiry, this, this question of like, how can I discover your gift or how can I see your gift? Cool. Um, Gabriel, is there, is, would, you, would you like to go next? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm challenged of, of, at this juncture, I'm always challenged by what do I say? Because as soon as I start talking, it's like the notion that I have that feels like it has a motivation and wants to come forward. As soon as I start speaking, it's like there's a little bit of a disconnect between the feeling of that motivation and how it's articulated or even in terms of my capacity to articulate a, a, a feeling or a notion. Um, so it's like on the one hand, there's a space of say cosmology or like a, a, a picture or a vision or an idea space. And then how this idea space, and I heard you speaking to, to this Jorge as well, I believe is how this idea space is uh, um, comes into contact with say action where the idea space starts to engage feeling and will and how there can be uh, uh, the translation between an idea through feeling and how that engages outwardly in action that there's like hiccups in the system as it translates through those processes so even in, in this in connection with that with this notion, even looking, say, at feelings and how that drives motivation both in thinking and in action, in terms of how we respond, responsibility, and also how we receive information from our environment. And in this, uh, in our subjective experience, there's, I am for this, a feeling comes forward. I am for this, yes. I am against this. I feel totally against it, no. Right? And in my experience... Are you, are you showing like those two feelings? Like you're showing like this, like yes, and then the no. Yeah, okay. that, I mean, I, I can viscerally feel that as well. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like in conflict um, and in confusion and in disorientation, or it's like I start to question my own motives in, in the sense of feeling where a yes comes forward 
and then say that could be selfish or it could be other oriented, but then other oriented is yes, if it's my wife, yes, if it's my family, but no, if it's not my wife, if it's not my family. So like there's these boundary edges of yes and no, or I'm in sympathy with that, or I'm in antipathy with that. Mm -hmm. And so connecting that, that's, that feels very primal. It feels, feels very instinctual. And I know in my own experience, it these tendencies towards yes or no, sympathy or antipathy, have a life of their own kind of like they it's almost like they're a spirit that takes over my life and my thinking and my feelings and my actions are so embedded in this feeling of yes or no that i don't have a real sense of objectivity in that moment or a real sense of freedom as regards choice or sort of moral um, mm. weighing of context mm -hmm. so <clears throat> <coughs> but I heard you speak about the tribal village in, say, the Maya land, in the Maya world, where what we know today is hierarchy in terms of its um, educational proponents of, right from the get-go, we're, we're organized intellectually and feeling and our actions are organized by external factors. Whereas in our ancestral tribal cultures there was i, th I think a, a group a group soul is in a sense where even talking about aborigines or something there's like a group they talk about their group memory the dream time mm. but e so mm -hmm. in that dream time the individual didn't have freedom or in a sense there are no individuals it's like the collective notion evolves as a feedback system within the cells of, of the, of the unit. Yeah. So it's like to go back to that in the sense that I am, I've, I'm experiencing myself as an individual who's aware of those sympathies and antipathies where I think in more tribal cultures, those were survival mechanisms that were more instinctual. They weren't so cognitive. Mm -hmm. anyway mm -hmm. so coming okay. back to it yeah, feels well, like so inside myself as an individual how do i learn to be attentive to the sympathies and antipathies and not be driven instinctually into action mm. Thank but you. from a sort of neutral place then to contemplate the moral imperatives of what those different motives are and how they're engaged. So in, in a sense of responsibility, even as a person, and then within community, where is that sort of prayer space or sacred space mm. that allows us to start developing that kind of sensitivity as individuals and communities? And then that sense, but then there's, that's good theoretically, but then, if conflict does happen and we get taken over by those different drives, yeah, we lose that sense of neutrality or sensitivity. So it's like there's a strong piece about the developmental, the commitment to the, the development. First of all, acknowledging something yeah. about what I'm talking about, but then also strategies, which is also a okay, it's never been done before. How do we lean into that sort of prayerfully to start to serve the emergence of that presently? Because we can't really go backwards into the womb where it's safe and warm and all nice and cuddly. Yeah, so I hear you speaking about this thing that uh, about the different parts of ourselves. There is different parts of ourselves and we exist in different parts at the same time. And yeah, Muna. Yeah, hi. This is just my time that I need to leave the space. So I just wanted to say thank you. And I wanted to ask if the recording you're going to send it to everybody. Yes. So I can see the last part. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah. make it available. Okay. Thank, thank you. you so much, Muna. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye.
I feel I feel sad because I wanted to do an experiment and I want to uh, I'm sad that Emuna didn't get to do it. Uh, amazing. Uh, Elijah, you had your hand hand up a little while ago. Uh, yeah. Cool. Um, and yeah. just a, just a, just a quick uh, time check. We have about like 30, 30 more minutes and I still want to do an experiment with you guys uh, of going in, into teams and and do something really cool so okay i'll try to shorten but there, there's something i guess i really want to say here in terms of whatever is this village and if all of us right now thought that you know within a year all the big cities were going to be shut down there's three days of food and we had to go survive somewhere and we we were looking at doing that together so we, we had a very driven purpose and we were specific about our survival. Now, that's that's a very different context than, let's say somebody's got 150 acres of land, they've got 10 buildings on there or something like that, and they're attracting people to go live in a village, and the owner of that land has decided to give this land to everybody in some form. And maybe they give the, the land to everybody, and it becomes a communal thing, which has been done in England. Uh, and uh, like a philanthropist gives the land to everybody and then everyone kind of goes in there and then they, they got to figure it out. That's very different than let's say all of us are looking at putting in money together to buy land and then set up a village. And that's very different than going, let's say to Damanur, which is in Italy, which is like the, the kind of like main reference point for a little eco village community living where they, they've done that for 50 years and created something they did have a leader, and, and if you go there, you have to participate in what they've done, which is very different from, let's say, us just talking about it and maybe thinking, we don't know what's going to happen. We're just philosophizing about what village is, but we have no plan. We have no, no real idea of what's going to happen in the future. So yes. to me, all of these are very different contexts, very different, and yes. the... Like for me, I have a sort of like an idea of something called a shared knowledge community where 144 people get together and they're brought together more economically. Like I really think that the economics has to sort of, let's say, be talked about because if we're going to come into conflict and let's say uh, Gabriel's bringing in $200,000 and I'm bringing in nothing, but I'm bringing in my, my family or I'm bringing in me um, or I've got an RV or I've got a TP or I've got whatever, each of us, if we if we have a, a higher philosophy together, that again is a very different context. And I think in terms of conflict, deep down, a lot of the time it comes down to division of work and it comes down to resources and who's putting in what and who gets what. And I think because, I don't know about you guys, but I grew up within a very individualistic world and I'm still in a very individualistic world. And the thought of the village Actually, uh, my like the more I sit here, I think, I don't know if it's impossible, but I'm not like you. I mean, I'm a single guy. I'm a single older guy. Like if I was in the village, I'd probably be one of the elders, which I, 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 could, I could look at being and liking. But I think without the reference point of a true context, whatever we're talking about kind of lacks reality. Yeah. And we're not really, you know, I, that's just my, my take on this. I, and I don't want to be the wet blanket, but no, I, I have a hard time tapping into anything because I need a real reference point these days for reality. So go, go ahead, I, Melissa. Thank you for saying that, Elijah. And I heard that you're doing economic villaging with 144 people and for me, this call right now is the village. The hierarchy, the leadership, the how will it go is, yeah, it's more of a fantasy. And for me, my reality is this call. You are my village right now. When I get off this call, the friend that I go meet for a play date or the friend that I call to hold space for me because I'm overwhelmed, th this is my village right now. This is it. It's not separate from what's happening. It's not separate from like this moment this meeting what's going on here yeah 
Yeah, and it, it comes to yeah, this point of that I wanted to get to, and it's perfect. You did a perfect introduction to it. And it's like, what is the reference point? And the for me, the reference point that is like uh, helping me build this and be here as a villager and be like taking the steps towards creating something together in a team is this, this sense of uh, self, like, and it's a, of having my center and and to know where my center is. And what what's happening with modern culture is that we relate from up here and then we, we start going into like, I'm right, I'm right. And then we create resentment and emotions start happening. And then we like, like uh, we explode and go something like that. It goes sometimes or, or it can go in many different ways. Uh, so this experiment that we're gonna do is about uh, centering ourselves and so that we go into this position inside of ourselves where we can relate with another this is our reference point like like what gabriel was saying like that's your your god feeling your 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 yes and your no your your feelings con in connection with your with your expression or your feelings in connection with with the parts of your being <clears throat> So uh, like what, what Elijah, what you're saying is like, we don't know where this is going. We don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. And there is all these different contexts. And I think that this space here from the ground down and up, the, this, this space is not for exactly like teaming up and like saying, I'm agreeing, like I'm gonna work with you and this is what we got. But to, to notice like, for me, this is of huge value to know the different perspectives and your voices is, is helpful for me to hear you. What is your pain? What are you bringing into the space? What do you want in village? What is, uh, and uh, so, that, uh, so that I can make more space in, in my being for, for all of these parts that, I'm, that I haven't integrated of myself so that I can be able to work with more people because I, I have a programming that blocks me from working with certain people and because they're too dangerous or because they're in disagreement with me because they don't like me because they don't agree with me etc so i invite you to just take a deep breath right now just take a deep breath and feel that the air going into your nose and feeling in your stomach your belly just acknowledging that that we are breathing here There is a, a, a there is two types of relating uh, that I can see right now, and and the relating that I'm navigating towards is the navigate the relating being to being. But I, I see you, I see you out there. You're you're in this call. You are in this in this group together, and that not I don't need anything else. I don't need an explanation. I don't need like. Um, like to know who you are, to be here with you. And, and I'm just here with you. And, and this is a being to being connection. I'm acknowledging your being. I'm connecting with your being. I'm actually like, it's like, like finding things that I love and appreciate about your being. Seeing your gifts, seeing what you have to bring to the village, seeing your, your pain, seeing the, the, the suffering that, that is behind there. And this is where, where it starts for me, this being to being connection. This is connection from, from my, my being, not from my mind of projecting my, my concepts and ideas on you, but from, from really like from my heart to your heart. So to take a deep breath, take another deep breath and we're gonna do this uh, thing that I call first position. It's a small guided, uh, it's not a meditation, it's an, ex an, an exercise to bring your center into your uh, physical center, your energetic center into your physical center so that you can experience yourself this connection from your own being. It's not a concept, it's not something that you read in a book, it's not something that the master or the guru has, it's something that, that you can experience yourself. And you have probably experienced this many times before and I think this is the cultural shift that it creates, it helps to create a village from where we can relate from. 
So take a deep breath and start using, start noticing where your attention is. Start noticing where your attention is, if it's in the in the future, in the, the thing that you have to go after this, in the thing that you did this morning, something that happened this morning in, in that, whatever it is, like you start noticing where, where that attention is. If it's in music, if it's in your children, if it's in the food, if it's that you wanna make food. And you start gently bringing that attention to, to here and now, wherever it is, uh, start bringing it to the here, to this present moment, to this like, like three second cycle. Every three seconds, it's like, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, to have like a, this sense of a small here and small now. Like, this is all there is. Or everything that happened in the past is in the past, everything that is in the future is in the future. And you have your energy and your attention here in, the, in this right, this very present moment with these people in this space. And then when you have that, when you have gathered your attention here in front of your face in the form of a ball, you can see it, it's yours. This is your energy. This is your where your attention is. And then you can slowly and gently bring that, that ball of energy into the center of your being. You're gonna bring it to the center of your being right under your belly button in between your hips. That is a point of balance of your physical body. That is the center of your physical body. And this is an experience. This is something that like really you can sense that the energy and your attention is in your being, in your physical body. You are inhabiting with your energetic center, your physical center. That's inhabiting your body. You, you learn this kind of stuff in martial arts. This is your sensation of being centered in your being. And when, when you are there, you can use your clicker, like your click of your fingers to drop a grounding cord from your center, the center of your being, down to the center of Gaia, down to the center of the planet Earth. This is your grounding cord. It's creating your grounding cord. This grounds your being to the, to the, to the ground. And you can really attest this grounding core if you stand up and you try to jump. If you try to jump, there is something that pulls you right back down into the air. This is the attraction, how your, your body, your physical body is grounded in, in the air, is attracted to the air. We are here, we are, this is our connection. And it's a two-way connection that it connects the your your body it's with Gaia so Gaia is sending you energy and you can also send energy to Gaia Gaia I call Gaia Mother Earth or there's different names and and the more you practice this the more you can get that distinction that difference of relating from from your mind when your energetic center is in your mind to when it is in your physical body it's very, very, very different. It feels different. It sounds different. So I, I invite you, if you're, if you're doing this, uh, this exercise, I invite you to say the color of your grounding cord. Your grounding cord has a color, and it's about this thick. It's flexible, and it's connecting you to to Gaia. And I invite you to say at the count of three the color of your grounding cord. One, two, three. Purple. Um, turquoise. <laughs> Thank you. And the, there is a third step. Use your clicker to declare your bubble of space. This is the, the bubble of space that is around you of your being. This is your, the essence of your being is here. There is a different energy points across all of your body, in your sex area, in your organs, in your lungs, in your heart, in your throat, in your mind, there's all different organs that they're generating a pulsation, a vibration, they generate a magnetic field. 
And this magnetic field, it makes up for your bubble of space. And this is the way that you are connected with the world. This is your, your individuality, your being, your, your womb. It's calling also your egg, where you are uh, protected, where you are, yeah, this is your bubble of space. And, and everything inside of it is your thoughts, your emotions, your ideas, your concepts, your feelings. All of this is inside of that bubble. And outside of that bubble is uh, everything else, everybody else. Yeah, everything else is outside of that. And, and it's, not, it's not a wall. It's not a, something that, that cuts you off from the world, that, that you can use to cut off others from the world. But it is a distinction that what's in here is mine, or is like my, my being, my feelings, and what's out there is... Uh, the the rest of, of the world like other people's feelings other people's emotions other people's ideas and the more you practice this also the more clarity you you start getting about what's yours and what's not yours what has been put there from somebody else and what is actually from from you and and I, i'm sharing this uh, this is the first position. You go to centering yourself, grounding yourself, and creating your bubble of space. And this is the, the originating point for connecting with, with another. It's very different connecting from, from here or from here. I connect with you from here. There, if you notice it right now, there, there is no thoughts. There is no, no thought. There is no uh, projection of, like, I... Uh, I'm, I, should, I am this or you're that. It's like this connection. So I, I invite you to, well, yeah, let's go into this next, next space. I noticed that this is the, the origin point. This first position is the origin point for, for relating in a village. And it's like amazing because it's like you, you don't need to be talking. You don't need to be talking. And I actually want to be silent for one minute. Just be silent for one minute and start and look at the people in the screen. Look at that we are here. Look at their eyes. Stay in connection with one of them. And we'll do this for one minute. These are real people. These are people that are here. These are beings. Each one of you have an amazing skill, an amazing gift to, to bring to your village. We have about, we have about 15 minutes left. Is there anything anybody wants to say about what we just did? What feelings came up for you? What, what happened for you? Do you notice anything different inside of this way of relating? It feels funny, you know, if it's you know, something you've never done before, just to look at someone and I also feel you're being looked at. <laughs> it's... Uh... You know, there's like a thing that 
like just if you have someone like next to you physically like look at them in the eyes for like a minute in silence it feels so funny but you do feel some connection and it, and it's so simple it's one minute and you start staring into somebody's eyes for one minute and you start feeling the like magic there is actually like electricity that starts happening and then all of your being starts like becoming alive and like and then like fear comes, I don't know, like emotions come out of this. Out of like just being for one minute, like looking at each other's side, you start seeing the magic that is inside of each other. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. Noticing Cam. Yeah, anybody else? Well, yeah, that's just within that space. That's it's part of what I'm referencing in the yes and the no. It's like seeing and being seen. And then in that space, yes, there's say silence or a, or a stillness, a tangibility to the presence of awareness. And then within presence of awareness, there's like, what does this mean? There's various questions that might come up. Or a feeling of embarrassment or shame might come up if I remember something that I did in the past that makes me feel like I'm not worthy of this moment. And then it's like having some sense of meditative awareness around these feelings, and these ideas, and still remaining present in the feeling and experience of presence. And then within the experience of presence, what levels of depth might come into my awareness in terms of the unknown do i start seeing colors around you do i start seeing geometry moving and forming your eyeballs just and to say that there's different degrees of depth and how do i remain clear in those different degrees of depth but that's just within the space of observation or awareness how do i carry that then into the complexities of an operation, like even milking a cow in tandem with trying to teach my children what it means to milk a cow while being aware of all those different degrees of depth within yeah. awareness. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, the, this is like riding a bicycle. It's been like learning to ride a bicycle for me. It's mm -hmm. very different, uh, uh, it's very difficult at first, very awkward. And like, I, I tend to, I used to like look at other places or like look over or like, like it would be very hard to allow that, that connection to happen. And the, the more I've been practicing like this, like going into first position and then like staying in contact, it's like, it's almost like there isn't a no need for words. Like it's like, like going and wiggling out of this reality of verbal reality into something that is called experiential reality. That is be that is like it's way bigger. If you can imagine the, the the amount of things that are in the world and the number of words that we have, it's like there is so many more uh, experiences that are available for us right now. And uh, if we stay in the verbal reality, then we limit it. We limit like what we are able to experience. And what I've noticed is that you see, in being in this place of connection. Uh, you you almost can know exactly what's next. You all you know what uh, what what is needed. Uh, we could even be able to milk a cow just by being going into this place, and then you go, then the person moves to milk milk the cow, and then the children watch, and then they know how it's done, and then uh, and I, by being in contact uh, with like this, like it is. It, is such an intimate connection and is is really known what is next like we can just look at each other's eyes and like yes yeah we need we need to get an orange juice uh, we need to um, put on our shoes and go outside uh, but with all of the noise that that happens up here and how we learn to relate from up here is like it doesn't let us like see what's needed it doesn't let us like have this connection because we are up here like thinking about do they like me they don't like me or uh, how am I gonna like escape to have this smoke or how am I gonna 
uh, like, how are we gonna get to do that homework that is really difficult? How are we gonna like, uh, like out outweigh the, the the government system that is like putting so much pressure on us, it's, et cetera. There is a magic in, in this and, and it's very telepathic and it's very like connective. And the more you practice it with somebody, like, wow, it's just like, it's like starts like growing and, and and there is expansion. There is like this sense of expansiveness. And then there is this quality in the space that changes when there is this, this that kind of relating. And this, this is, I'm telling you from what I've experienced in the last year of experiment, experimenting with this. And the other invitation will be for you guys to, to experiment with that, to, to do that experiment. With, with the people around you, with yourself, like experiment, like what is it like to shift in your energetic center from here, from being in your mind down, down into your, your physical body and then grounding, then creating your bubble of space and moving from there. Like, it's like a, like a samurai, like a martial artist. This is your, your place of power. From off here is good for like hitting hitting with the head and that that can really hurt okay. <laughs> anyways i i, I noticed that we have about we have about a eight minutes um does anybody want to say anything uh, right now at this point Check. see something uh, go ahead, Peter. Yeah, I, I'm feeling I have to go soon, but um yeah, I, I, I'm grateful that we had this meeting and I and I got some insights. Um I I'm honestly like I'm hurting quite deeply from this disconnection that I'm that I know that so many of us are experiencing. I think a sense of belonging and community and um, kind of like a, a, a bigger vision has been always important to me. And yeah, I'm just hoping that I can heal myself enough to be able to, you know, show up in the position that, that, that is called for me in community. So if anything, I just see how much more work that I need to do on myself uh, to, to truly be uh, in the position I need to be uh, for my community. You know, I, 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 I can't stress enough how important it is that, that we have to take sovereign ownership and responsibility over our own lives. So that when we're showing up in community, we're we're having something to offer, and we're we're yeah. we're we're giving something of value, and we're not bringing all our conditions and all our 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 baggage with us. So mm -hmm. uh, and I so I just want to say thank you for for to Jorge for for initiating this, and. Uh, um, looking forward to supporting you more and building our relationship um, and and what that looks like for the future. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Pete. And thank you, with, Peter. With, with this thing that you say about belonging, I, I've been, I have been looking for that for a long time uh, too. And it, it was in this experience uh, in this ex exercise of like going down into my center, inhabiting my physical body with my energetic center, it was what brought this belonging to me, like finding belonging here, finding belonging in where I am right now, finding belonging in, in my healing, in, in, the, in me, me being the project. Because if I, if, if I do that, if I may, nobody can center myself for me. Nobody can like do that for me. Only I can do it. So, yeah. so is it that that really like brings that that belonging back of, of like I'm I'm inhabiting this body. Like wow, like 
I'm in this body. Like, what are the chances? And <clears throat> yeah, like that can be like that. That can be your project. That is your project. You are your own project. You are that thing that you're gonna offer to to the village. Is it, you that that your center that you're grounded and that you're your your own being. to go now so thank you peter all right, all right bye you. for now take care bye, bye. all righty anybody else um elijah what i heard was was like if you're using the five spaces model is that you by centering yourself in your personal space within the community space you found belonging Is that right? Mm, well, I'm, I'm seeing the, the map of spaces right now and I, I'm seeing the sacred space being the my center. The, the sacred space being my center. When I, I when I align my, my energetic center with my physical center, I'm aligned with the sacred space. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so maybe that the personal space is like this, like spiraling, sorry, I'm gonna do like, like spiraling, like it goes into the personal space first, like first I'm in the personal space, then I'm in the one-on-one -on -one space when I'm with my duality. And then I'm in the in the group space where I'm like my different parts of myself, my child part, my adult part, my parent part, um, uh, my uh, neurotic part, like my responsible part. And then I'm in the community space when I'm like part, part of the whole, so it, it originates from the from that sacred space and and yeah like I'm I'm all of those parts like we're all of those parts and um, and that personal space is kind of like the the bubble yeah like there is that bubble that I guess it depends on from what lens you see it um, yeah and cool and I, I just want to say something about this map was there anything else about that Elijah. No, no, just looking at the the formulization, like I didn't got to get it right, but the mm -hmm. formulization of belonging and then mm -hmm. sharing that realization that you had. But again, sort of, you know, I like maps. So for me, I orientate myself by positioning yeah. things in this map because we're essentially in the community space or the village space. And that's right. the um, space we're in today. But then that's what I, just what I heard from you. So, yeah. Thanks. So going to the belonging. So, Melissa, were you gonna say something? I wonder if everybody knows what this map is, because this map is a very valuable tool. You, you want to introduce it a, a little bit, Meli? Why is it valuable for you? Yeah. Uh, is yeah the map uh, the map of the five spaces. Is there someone who doesn't know it? Elijah's work. Yeah, so I, I, I I don't know it. I don't know it at all. Cool. Um, yeah, cool. That's the picture of it. And mm -hmm. at the center is the sacred space, and the four other spaces is personal space, one-on-one -on -one space, group space, and community space. And it's a very valuable distinction for me to have awareness of which spaces I'm moving through, how, and even how often. And, and I'll, I'll share my experience of like being centered and ground. Yeah, go ahead. Mm, is everybody okay to stay in the call for about five more minutes? Because we're at the top of the hour. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, go ahead. Man. Yeah, I appreciated Pete and Elijah and Jorge what you're bringing in about belonging and how being centered and grounded and really like quieting my mind and quieting my past and being present. And that that is a sacred space that I'm I am available to sacredness to sacred forces working through me. And from there, I can move. I can go into one-on-one -on -one spaces. I can go into personal space, 
I can go into group space or community space, but I can work from that center where the sacred is working through me and I'm not in my own personal space, even though I'm with community and just working with my projections, for example. Uh, so yeah, that I didn't see that so clearly until right now and that's that's valuable for me. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, I wanna, anything else about that? Uh, I'll love to uh, get that map from you. I just started to draw it, but I can't quite read what it's saying and learn a bit more about that. But um, I just, uh, I'm going to get out of here and I just wanted to let you know, like, I really appreciate this and like, I feel uh, uh, a, a good paradigm shift happening here, not only with us, but uh, mm -hmm. A, a lot of people and I think a lot of people uh, are going to be looking for this more and more and I think that uh, uh, we need this I mean the world needs stuff like this and um, I'm happy to be a part of it and I know it's a big undertaking and it's going to be a long journey and a journey that will last like generations so um, I look forward to it and I know that in the future something great will happen. I'm not sure when it will be or what it will be, but it will be Thank good. Thank you, Cam. Yeah, and we didn't we didn't get to do like uh, all of the things I, I wanted to do, and yeah, it's like leaving space for like doing this again or like I, I want to like there is so much more to share and experiments to to go into. Um, thank you for thank you for coming here, Cam. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Yeah. Thank you. Nice Bye. to meet you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. I'm going to take off, too. Thank you very much, Jorge, and everyone yes. who was here. Great to meet you, everybody. Thank you, Elijah. And thank you for yeah, thank you for your maps. I wanted to do a shout-out shout out to Elijah. And for the other benefit that I got from, from these maps, it was huge. So if you can look, look into... Uh, I'll probably leave some. I'll leave some links uh, to so you can contact Elijah for these maps, uh, which are really amazing. This is just one of them, and and uh, like really, they they start growing from from within you to to like create more possibilities. So thank you for for your work. Okay, bye everybody. Alrighty. Bye. Bye Elijah. Good sun tight. Alrighty. Charlie, nice to meet you. Well, thank uh, you everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you Gabriel. Anything you want to say before we before we end this? That's all. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Thank you so much. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Gabriel. Thanks, Melissa. <laughs>